the patient. As far as I remember, she's a, a, f a otherwise healthy woman in her 40s, right? So the aneurysm is asymptomatic, it's uh, her only aneurysm on the right MCA and uh, it was found incidentally. As far as I remember, she had headache, right? She had headaches for the, the MR, she had for, was for headaches. Do, do you know by heart the, the, the measurement of the aneurysm? So the, the, the aneurysm sac was measured 11 by 10 and uh, the, the, the aneurysm neck was measured 8 millimeters. She, she's loaded with uh, aspirin and, clopid, uh, and, and ticagrelor, right? Since, yes. So very fine now is very fine, very fine now inhibition is 84% and uh, we always do both. We do, we do usually uh, either the evening before or in the morning prior to the treatment, uh, multiplate and verify now in all patients. No, no stand, no flow diverter without testing, never. So, uh, in all cases, such cases, you will give antiplatelets and yes. double. Give right. always, in all these cases, we give dual antiplatelets and we give, uh, and we do always do testing. Uh, dual testing, uh, multiplate and verify now. In case of inconsistency, we also we repeat the tests and or do uh, PFA tests as well. And you mentioned ticagrelor, so you're not using Plavix anymore, you switched to the modern agents. More, more or less, yes, yeah, entirely. Uh, either ticagrelor or brosigrel. So I'm sorry, I also came in and people are still coming. So what is the strategy for this patient? The, st the strategy was um, the uh, uh, a, a piconis assisted coiling of the aneurysm, uh, meaning that MARTA will put the, uh, the piconis first, will deploy the piconis as close as reasonably possible adjacent to the aneurysm wall. We'll then, with a second microcathode, recatheterize the aneurysm and uh, will start filling the aneurysm with coils. All right, that's terrific. And I'm sorry, uh, Rashmi, and I want to invite uh, Dr. Rashmi and Dr. Manish Chuk to chair this session as well. Guys? I'm sorry, it's going haphazard, but <laughs> I think Rashmi is happy sitting where she is. Huh? <laughs> so meanwhile, okay. Marta? Yeah. Uh, you have a seven French card catheter or eight French? We have a seven French. Uh, It's a seven, uh, seven, seven French twist up right. I have, I'm, I have to repeat everything because nobody can hear you. So, uh, it's a seven, uh, it's, it's a seven French twist up right tip uh, from the right groin to the right ICA. And the uh, the catheter for the uh, the piconis is a uh, twenty one or twenty seven, a Trevo, Trevo, a Trevo, Trevo Pro eighteen catheter, which is a twenty one thousand inch ID microcatheter. I personally prefer uh, 27 catheters. The, the the reason for the 21 catheter, the advantage of the 21 catheter is you have less uh, profile of the microcatheter. The advantage of the 27 catheter is that it's usually uh, possible to to um, locate the, uh, the the implant more precisely. So if you want to go with a really high accuracy in, in device placement. The 27 catheter is better, but Marta is very small, smart. You will see it. She, she does it with a 21 as, as well. All right. So, uh, Professor Engis, can you a little bit explain? There are some people here who may not understand the concept of peak owners, number one. And number two, sizing and strategy. I mean, how do you size it and how do you place it? Yeah. So, the, um, I, I think Marta said she will show the device on the table. So, right. the, devi the device has two, two components one is the, the crown, the other is the shaft. The crown of, of either Four or six petals, which means we'll use a piconus one or piconus two. Piconus two. Piconus two. Um, so piconus one has four petals and a straight shaft. Uh, piconus two is the next iteration of the device. It has six petals instead of four, and there is an articulation between the crown and the shaft. And 
but I'm um, not sure we can see, but... Okay, let us uh, see we'll if try. we can. Uh, maybe we can magnify it. Um, so the, yeah. the, the, the crown is essentially deployed inside the aneurysm. So... Yeah, this, this works. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, the, the, the crown is deployed inside the aneurysm. Then you yeah. pull it, the, the crown uh, back all right. towards... No, they can yeah, see. exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. So you, you pull down the crown towards the, the neck level, the entrance level of the aneurysm. Then you fully deploy the device and the, the, the device will be anchored in the parent artery by the, the aneurysm shaft. The, the, the stand is detached from the insertion wire elect electrolytically. We usually do it at the very end of the procedure. So we, we, will, we do everything, including uh, deployment of the device and coiling and everything. And as a very last step, we uh, detach the device from the insertion wire. This has the advantage that in the unlikely case of any displacement or any intermingling of coils, uh, with a stand or something like that, you can you have still the the option to pull out the whole th thing. Great. Okay. And you would always like place the peak corners and then take the coiling microcatheter. Do both? Does it make a difference? Um, infrequently, um, I, I think we did maybe four or five cases where we, uh, as we used to do it previously with uh, neuroform and other stands. Sometimes we deploy the stand, wait for a couple of weeks to endothelialize, and come back for coiling. Um, but in the far majority of cases, um, we, we just, in one session, deploy the device, recatheterize the aneurysm and coil it. Right, so you don't trap a microcatheter, it doesn't matter? Um, no, tra trapping is not so good because um, if you want to, to reach all parts or all compartments of the aneurysm, um, if, you, if your microcatheter for the coils is trapped, mm -hmm. You, you have not the liberty to reach every th all component compartments of the aneurysm. So the, right. the likelihood of, of uh, incomplete filling is increased if you trap the microcatheter. It's better to go through. And uh, it's very easy to go through. It's, it's not, it of course. doesn't compare with uh, crossing a stent. Are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, if you have time, can we talk about sizing? I mean, how yes. do you do it? The, si the sizing is uh, relatively straightforward. So usually if you, if you measure and if you think your measurement is accurate, you go one size uh, upper than what you measured. Let's say if you measure seven, you take an eight, eight millimeter device. If you measure 10, you take an 11 or a 12. So uh, oversizing is actually never a problem. Undersizing can be a problem, but in that case, your device may fall off the aneurysm to the parent artery. Okay. Oversizing, it's, it's no big deal. The, 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 these little pedals conform to the aneurysm, even if they are too big. Okay, you mean sizing, you mean the width of the aneurysm, the width yes. of the neck? Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, so the, the, the only thing you have to measure is the, the neck width, and you decide, the, the device you, you, you select goes according to the neck width. All right. So I think we are all ready. So the, the shaft length is available in three sizes. It's 15, 20, and 25. As you may imagine, if you have 25 millimeter shaft, you have a quite stable construct with a 15, which which is the case, yeah, yeah. Um, um, if you use a, a, fif a 15, if you use a, fif a 15 device, it's, it's less stable, of course, but it, I mean, in that case, it should be more than enough. All right. <coughs> so I think microcatheter is already in the aneurysm. They're all uh, ready the to go. The travel ca catheter is in place. And what size they have decided in this case? Does does it not say now? It's 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 ten. All right. So it's it's apparently oversized, but um, we we would not expect any issue from this fact. So now the uh, the roadmap is used in order to to insert the device. It's usual, Is there any friction? No, no friction at all. Now you see you see the device. the The distal part, which is visible now, are the the six pedals. The six pedals are a little more radio opaque than the rest because they are now six folded together.
the yes I, I will explain I, I don't want to interrupt her I, I will explain later if you hold on for one second bit Marta uh, what we now see are the distal markers coming from the six pedals so the next marker this little dot uh, in the sh in the shaft is the is the article is the this is the articulation and this is the detachment marker So go ahead, if you if you want. I've got one, but this is doesn't show up on the screen so well. But I've got mine. So she's now inserting the device into the aneurysm. You see now the the opening of the pedals. So now the device is fully open. And most likely, Marta will now gently pull on the catheter and and bring the device Can you back. Just point at the device in B plane. Yeah, yeah. One second. This yeah. is the device. Perfect. This is the articulation, and this is a detachment marker. So now, radio silence, good. Just at the point. The belly, she has pulled it back yeah, after she, deploying. She, she pulled it back, and she will now draw, pull back the, the, the microcatheter and de fully deploy the device. So now we're almost there. Good. Now we, we know for sure that the shaft is fully open. The uh, six pedals are at the neck level of the aneurysm. Uh, we have this articulation which is going down. In, in this case, we don't really need the articulation. The, <coughs> the articulation was, uh, was brought into the device because if there is a very steep angle between the ar parent artery and the ex longitudinal axis of the aneurysm, the, the first version was sometimes too, too stiff and too straight. This one would really follow the curve if there is a curve. In that case, there is no curve, so it remains straight, of course. But even, even this, this would even work with a 90 degree angle between parent artery and aneurysm and longitudinal axis. But with Nicolas, do you have more coverage of the neck? Yeah. Well, Marta, <coughs> Marta, Marta is saying that she's, she selected a Piconus 2 instead of Piconus 1 because uh, she expects better coverage and co better coil retention from the six pedals than she would have expected from the four pedals, which is certainly a, a, a strong argument. So now the, uh, the microcatheter is most likely coming. It is an uh, SL10 or is it? It is an, an unshaded straight SL10, which is now inserted. What uh, wire are you using? It's a synchro wire. Okay, good. So, ISO 10. So Hans here, uh, so uh, I have a question. So why you don't bring the second microcatheter once you open the petals without, before opening the stent, so you cross the meshes with the microcatheter. It will be easier for the procedure than to open the whole stent and try like this to, uh, to catheterize through the stent or the meshes. So why, w when you open just the petals, you put the micro through it and after what you, uh, you deploy the stent? You, you, you can certainly do it, <coughs> but in, in that case, you have, you have this kind of uh, jailed catheter situation. If you do it like that, once you're, I mean, the passage is, I would say, always like that. It's, it's never a, a, a real issue to go through. And uh, if, if you do it that way, uh, from this position, you can can go back and forth and recatheterize to every possible condition, uh, uh, position you, you may want to go. And you detach the device at the end of the... At the very end, yes. The, the advantage of uh, doing it in two steps, if you wait for six weeks, the, uh, the shaft is completely endothelialized, so you, you don't even 
uh, observe any interaction between your um, a wire and microcatheter and the, the, and, the device, and the shaft of the stent, which is here, of course, not the case. But the, the first coil will be a 10 by 30 axiom. A 3D. Yeah. A 3D, 360. So the aneurysm diameter here was? 11. 11. 11. Okay. Yeah. So Marta is saying she, she uh, purposely is using the, the longest available coil for this situation in order to, to create a, a stable mesh for the following coils. <clears throat> Just waiting for s some backflow in now. Maybe during the coil placement, if can they show us the live floro, we can yep. very well see how the petals sort mm. of yep. hold the coils. The, the Marta? The question was, if if you would feel comfortable uh, for the f for the um she can have the uh, roadmap going on. They can the, those guys, transmission guys will just switch it to live floor. That's ah, okay. All. She okay. doesn't need to change anything. Good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That, that, this was the question. If if we go f during the live from the live transmission, we go to uh, unsubtracted instead of roadmap. Yeah. Uh, Good. Yeah, they, they did it. It's great. Good. So you are seeing the now without Roma, Now we see the, 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 the plain fluoroscopy image, yes. I think I uh, think it's clear that the the loops of these coils are literally sitting on the petals of the uh, piconus. That's one of the reasons why we usually use as a first, at least as a first coil, a 3D coil or at least a, a large coil to have a better chance of this kind of mechanical interaction between coil and, and piconus petals. Are you happy with the position? Martha? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Martha says she's happy. <laughs> Wait, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to ask. <laughs> any questions? So, uh, yeah, any do you want to do a run or just detach and go ahead? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Ashish, you would like to? Uh, there's something called a wave device. I know this is probably not the exact case for that. 
Um, what's your opinion on that? Uh, the center where I worked in UK, they've already done put 99, 97 web devices. Uh, that's in Kingston upon Hull. So, uh, any experience on that? We we have some experience with web. Uh, I, I think what is the largest web which is available right now? Is it 11? I won't no. know. I mean, uh, the, Paul Melikel is the man who is doing that in a place called Kingston upon Hull. Uh, that's near Leeds in UK. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, uh, apart from the the uh, aspect of sizing, the the, gen, the the aneurysm per C would certainly be uh, uh, an aneurysm suitable for a web device. Yes. Okay. But it, Did, did you consider this uh, shapeless Kanekas? Infini? No, obviously not. Maybe later? Maybe More stable. So Marta say uh, she, she doesn't like the idea of using a, uh, one of these long shapeless Kanika coils because uh, she thinks the, the, the frame should be more robust, should be more stable cage prior to considering this using this uh, shape, shapeless coil, Japanese coils. Okay. So she will put now a, another 3D coil inside this stand. And what size now? What, 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 what size? Just, just the same coil. All right. Ten, 10 by 30, 360. Is it th 360 uh, ultra or regular or? Regular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because are the, the biggest one. Sure. Yeah, the axiom regular. Right. Uh, it's uh, no, the axiom, not the 360. No, no, axiom 3D. Uh, so I, I was wrong. So it's the ac axiom 3D. Okay. So, uh, can you also tell the audience, I mean, we use a 10, we are using another 10. Yeah. So, what's the logic in using same size coil, you know? Sure. I mean, we, we, we see there is, I mean, given the size of the energy, but there is a lot of space left. So, the, the idea is uh, not to undersize and to, to hopefully make sure that the, the cir circumferential surface of the energy is fully covered with coils. If you, if, you, if you go to a smaller coil too early, you create the chance of having space of the aneurysm which is not covered by the coil, which is probably a, uh, a reason for a, a future recurrence of the aneurysm. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the idea is to create a kind of a shell of a, a, a coverage of the entire aneurysm surface. Yeah, that is pretty important, particularly in unruptured at times we also use same size coil, mm. one more, till you know you've got the wall opposition in all the three dimensions pretty well. And you undersize and a crescent is like, you know, and then it's very difficult to get to that area in the end. Dr. Henkes. So uh, how easy or difficult it is to enter in the meantime when she's putting the coils? Let's say it again. How, how, how easy or difficult it is to enter through the piconus into the aneurysm? Like, do we always need to make a loop like she just took the wire straight and she could cross the piconus into the aneurysm? It is actually... The there, there's a actually little interaction between the, the, the catheter and this piconus. You, you, it, is, it doesn't compare with catheterizing a stand. You, you, usually you just go through. It, it, in very steep curves, it can be not difficult, but it may, may need a little more time to find your way through the shaft. Mm -hmm. This is what uh, Chabel mentioned here. And you, you may consider putting a, a, uh, the catheter first. But once you are through the shaft, catheterizing the pedals is never an issue. Uh, suppose like while putting the coils, if the micro catheter comes out, so how easy or difficult it is repositioning the micro? It, it, it is not difficult at all. You just, just go through again. And any other, and uh, Dr. Henkes, hmm. any particular position where to cap, where to keep the tip of the micro catheter? Oh, um, yeah, that's that's an important point. It is usually not good to be too deep inside. So the the more proximal, the the closer you are to the neck of the aneurysm, 
the, the better is the position for the, three, the, the insertion of the 3D coils. Once you are very deep inside with your catheter and you're using 3D coils, the likelihood of, of pushing them out, out of the aneurysm is, is higher. If you are almost out of the aneurysm, the coil always wants to go inside. And But if we keep it proximal, the paintbrush thing won't be happening with the... Because if you want a good opposition along the walls in such yeah. a big aneurysm, <coughs> That may become a problem because you are entering through a uh, mesh of the that petals. One yeah. of the petal mesh you might be entering, and you won't be having that kind of free movement inside. Yeah, but um, I mean, as you may have observed, uh, Mara was not holding the catheter in one place. She was going in and out and going to different places. So it's it's not staying in one position. It is it is an active process of uh, modifying the position of the tip of the microcatheter purposely. Thank you. Yeah. You're detaching, Martin? So the, the second coil, coil will now be detached. So what is your next choice? Yes. Probably a nine. A 9-3D axiom. A 9 by 30 Axiom 3D will be the next coil. Yeah, Rashmi, you were saying something. So, uh, Dr. Henkes, would you like, uh, would you recommend doing a vaso CT or uh, something to confirm that petals are covering the branches arising from the aneurysm? No. Yeah. I mean, just you believe on they the were, petals? They were, they were in the right place, and what you see with the vaso CT is with another radio exposure that they are in the right place. I mean, there's, there's little more information I would expect from that. I mean, I, I, I have seen cases where it was, it was really unclear um, where you are. If it is very complex anatomy, I, I, we would most likely do it. Um, and, and that, in that this is a relatively straightforward case, I would say. So I, I, I would see little benefit from a, 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 a Dynacity. It is a Siemens machine, so it's called Dynacity. And how long will you continue the antiplatelets? Um, this is like a, a regular stand. So the patient uh, remains on aspirin lifelong and has six weeks of dual antiplatelets. Six weeks uh, is enough. Okay. Any specific, any preference for a specific coil besides 3D? I mean, the, the, the beauty of these axiom coils is they are uh, very, very rapid detachable. So you, you don't waste time by for detachment process. Um, in, in general, we are we are using a uh, arbitrary mixture of axiom uh, target coils, uh, Kandika coils, and yeah, that's more or less our selection. We we have, have all of them, but the, I would say 85% is between these three companies. So can you point on this 2D image that where would you like the petals to be? I mean, where are the they? Pedal, the the perfect position for the petals is like this and this. So if you cover here and here, if you cover this part, you usually have enough uh, s uh, support for the coils and, and sufficient coil retention. Position the peak winners. Suppose if, like, the we want it in a particular position to cover. The, the, say it again. The, the uh, say it again. Would you like to reposition the peak winners? Suppose we are trying. We uh, we deployed the peak winners and we feel that it is not covering the artery we yeah. want. So in the complex case, this is in relatively easier case. Yeah. If if you are not happy with the position, you just pull it back and, and do it again. You can can reposition it deliberately. Um, we had a f I have seen personally two cases where inadvertently by being distracted or any other reason the uh, the peak conus was pulled out after the aneurysm was coiled and this worked also very well. So you can do kind of peak conus remodeling <laughs> and reuse the device if you sterilize it again. Now eight or seven or what's? So in those two cases, like, was it?
it uh, relatively easy to pull it out or the coils were like tending to entangle with or moving the coil mass when we were we pulled out the piconus in those two cases? Um, I, I remember one they were they were just it, it was a very narrow ba basla artery and the operator was pulling on the coil catheter and the uh, the piconus was not yet detached and with the coil catheter he pulled out the whole thing <laughs> and the <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a, a second of hard cardiac standstill, but nothing happened. <laughs> so we just missed the history of this what, did, what is the, your next call, Martha? I was, I was not on the... Uh, nine, nine by 20 will be the next one. Again a 3D, again a 3D, or it's another 9 by 20 th 3D. Because I think if we, if we turn to, to helical coils, we compartimentate the analog. Yeah, yeah. We prefer to use more 3D coils. So the argument for more 3D coils is uh, the expectation or the hope to avoid any co compartimentation of the, the aneurysm space and uh, to have a more even filling of this available space. Martin is saying that she, f she can f recognize that the catheter is following the coils or the, the catheter is painting and is going on either side. Yeah. <coughs> Manish? So for some of the people who are not interventionists, you can see the micro catheter moving around. Can you see that? So what we call as paint brush. So it helps to spread the coils into all spaces of the aneurysm. So many interventionists will like to see this effect, so we know it's spreading all around, not fixed in one place. And brain brushing supposedly helps to achieve better occlusion. So I just have a question. Uh, you said the neck was around six millimeter, five point eight. Eight. Eight millimeter. Eight. Eight millimeter. What size? So what? What? What now? You have a smile on your face, so is there a catch there? <laughs> so what, what is your... S I, am no, I am no say in your face, so... <laughs> no, no, my, 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 I, would, I would say it's face is as usual. <laughs> so basically you remain so happy throughout cases, basically, yeah? yeah? So you, you said an, an, an eight or seven. a seven, okay, a seven, 720 3D or helical? 3D. Three. A 720 3D. Do you think it's uh, a good idea to make a plane roadmap to see where the, the next call is going? So if you can see what she is using a blank roadmap. So beyond a limit, you see the, where the coils are going better in a blank roadmap. Mm -hmm. Now we're not really worried about coils coming out and you will know that anyway. She can see on fluoroscopy where the peak onus is. So this is something we also use very frequently, particularly when doing small ruptured and you're trying to crush in a coil, where is it going, use a blank roadmap. It's still very, very f freely distributing, right? 
I, I mean, for, at least from here, it doesn't appear like the uh, the coil is already trapped by the other ones. It's it's moving free in the available space. Still, still plenty of space. So. How to continue? Did you, did, did you consider to, did, did you consider to go to the with the catheter to go to the, the other compartment? Ah, the fell is here. So there were some questions. Asked about lower, lower using a web in such a case and everything. What was the size? Of it? It's quite big, wasn't it? The, the neck was eight, and the uh, fundus diameter, the largest, was eleven millimeters. Yeah. So if you put a web, this is no go. No go. No go. Uh, I mean, our own experience and the data is the problem with web is um, size, and I think I wouldn't put a web in anything more than ten millimeter. Because the largest web is 11 millimeter, so if you try to put it in this, it will just recur. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Dr. Hedges? Yes. Martha, hi. Is she busy? Three uh, target XL three sixty five by fifteen. Fifteen. Five by fifteen uh, target XL three sixty XL. The Marta says she, she wants to know if this coil goes to the the other compartment by itself or if it's really necessary to recathetrize the uh, the other compartment. I personally think um, most most uh, most likely she has to recathetrize, but we will see. It's a pretty big pretty we big need coil. To go huh? into the inferior compartment from the. Sorry. Second. What size peak corners did you put? Uh, ten. Is this peak corners two? Peak corners two, yes. Are you using peak corners one at all? Yeah, we we use it. Still quite a lot. Um, the, the the construct is a little more robust, so to say. On the peak corners one. With, with peak corners one, yeah. The, the the this articulation is good for angulated. Uh, yeah, Marta is mentioning that the, the she's right, and yeah, she's always right. Um, so the the uh, the loop is going to the the lower compartment. Um, but only one, one, uh, so far, only one loop. Uh, the the advantage of the Picone, one of the advantages of the Piconus 2, which is most likely not necessary here, is that you can combine it with the floater vertical. So you, if, uh, for instance, the, the idea would come up to put a floater vertical to the uh, inferior branch of the, the uh, right MCA, a P48 could be deployed to the, lower br to the inferior branch of the um, MCA through the struts of the Piconus 2. What catheter do you need for P48? Uh, 21. Okay. So it's a smaller candidate. A, a small, yeah, it's a, a low profile uh, flutter vertical. So I will make you happy and I will Can you put a P48 through a. Uh, say, say it again. I, I, I had no headphones. Say it again, Marta. Marta? Uh, I will make you happy yeah. and I will go to the lower compartment. <laughs> Marta is saying she's, she's theorizing the, the other compartment just according to the wish of a. A single observer. Is she working on her own? Sir? Is she working on her own? No, she has one person with her. All right. So, can I ask you something? Sure. Uh, P, the P conus one, can you put a P48 through that? Um, you have to be very lucky. The, the, uh, here, the, the, the space, due to this angulation, the space is enough 
for the uh, uh, P48. If with the P conus one you have a strut just in the middle of the uh, afferent artery, it will prevent the, the flow diverter from full deployment. Here, uh, th this will not happen. And uh, just another question, on the P conus one, mm -hmm. the follow-up on the MR, you get that artifact? Yeah, you have an, an artifact uh, which is related to the detachment zone. The, the detachment zone uh, is, is based as, as the majority of the electrolytic detachments on uh, uh, I, I, iron. And um, it's, a, it's a very little piece, but it makes a significant artifact. It's not, it's not easy to get rid of this because the, uh, the I mean, it, it would require a complete chain, a modification of the detachment principle. Okay. Is the same artifact on P Conus 2 as well? Because Web doesn't have that artifact. You know, it's interesting how Web, I don't know what they do at that, at that detachment zone. How old is the patient? Um, in her mid 40s. She's otherwise good vessels. It's no atherosclerosis. I think what you observed is the catheter, very typical catheterization. It's not usually not different from that. You 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 find your way through easily normally. So what's your take on the use of piconus in acutely ruptured aneurysms? Yeah, we we use them. I mean, if, if there's a wide nagged aneurysm, we use them frequently. Uh, in that case, we give aspirin IV, we give a uh, 180 milligram tick agrilo through the gastric tube and bridge the time before. I mean, the, the, uh, the uh, aspiration effect, even if you give it IV, it takes two, three, four hours. So we bridge this with uh, integralin. And once we see on the uh, response test that the patient is has dual platelet inhibition, we stop the ticagrelor, the, the, the integral, sorry. Did you, have you had any thromboembolic problems in acute when you have used piconus? We, we, had a, we had a single, it was quite frightening with an uh, unexpected happy end. We had a, a ruptured ACOM aneurysm, wide neck ACOM aneurysm. It was a diffuse aneurysm and uh, we de deployed a, the can you interrupt the transmission from here to there? I don't want to distract her. I, I, I take your mic. Um, we had one, one case uh, where we de deployed in a ruptured ACOM aneurysm a, a piconus. And a, upon our deployment, there was a, a very leak, but clear, a uh, very small, but clear leakage from the, the uh, aneurysm dome. It probably touched inadvertently the, uh, the rupture side with, the, with one of the pedals. And uh, we didn't give integral in, coil the, quickly coil the aneurysm, and uh, thanks God the, the uh, piconus was completely thrombosed within minutes. Then we, after we had coiled the aneurysm, we gave integral in, the thrombus went away and the aneurysm stayed occluded, nothing happened. But it was kind of a, an irritated thing. We have short memory, Martin. Uh, is it 7 by 20? Yeah, 5 by 15 was this. Can I ask you another question while you're on? Um, so you have used a P-Conus, would you have considered flow diverter? We, we discussed this beforehand and we were um, discussing if it alternatively would, we would use a, um, uh, yeah, a flow diverter for the inferior, for the inferior trunk of the MCA, yeah. but uh, I think the, the more anatomic treatment is the uh, reconstruction of the bifurcation. The only reason I'm saying, and it might have been discussed, but complete occlusion rates with PCONUS with the published data is 85%. Correct me? Am I right? More or less, yeah. And so you have a 40 year old lady who has a potentially right MCA aneurysm, which some of my surgeons, I'm, I'm just debating, I'm not saying, 
but you know i have very active neurosurgeons and they will be they will argue why can't i clip it yeah i mean we are um we we are offering the the full range of treatment to the patients and uh, there, there are a few who are um, saying, yeah, I, I, since I know everything, I, I prefer surgical treatment. That's the reason why our surgical colleagues are still clipping 50 aneurysms a year, um, the, the majority of them coming uh, through our service. But um, I, I spoke to her and, and she frankly said, no, 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 no I don't want to have a hole in my head and uh, prefer the, uh, the endovascular way. So the, the majority of patients, meanwhile, have their own preference and just tell it. Right, okay. No, that's good. I think there is a, the pedal of the Piconus coming out, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, at least one pedal of the Piconus is, is out. Yeah, the others as well, right? I mean, did we discuss about Pulse Rider? Yeah? No, you um, we we ha only have a. S we, we only did a single case with Pulse Rider, and uh, it was not good for Pulse Rider nor for Piconus at the end. Uh, so that this, this is all the only experience we have so far. This is the pedal, I would say, is hanging in the inferior trunk, right? <coughs> the, the, the inferior, inferior trunk So Mario is not doing a single image, unsubtracted single image. Yeah. Mm. It's hard to tell how it came out, right? That's very unusual, isn't it? Hmm? That's very unusual. It's very unusual. Piconus never comes out. I, I have never, never seen this. Because uh, I've done a pu I've never had a piconus dropping out of no, the aneurysm. No, it's very unusual. Because in, in your program, you have asked for mayday prolapse piconus. Piconus doesn't do it. Usually. It's a pulse rider which can come down, but uh, that's, a, that's a problem with pulse rider. So if you use a pulse rider, you have a benefit of being inside the artery or one petal in the aneurysm, one in the artery. You can have both in the arteries, you can have both in the aneurysm and it can behave like a piconus and you can coil it. But the problem with pulse rider is you, as you continue to coil, those leaves can come down a bit sometimes. So you have to have your assistant to hold the catheter that way so that you can keep the pressure on. Piconus doesn't come out. At least I am not. I've, we we done quite a few piconus. We never had this problem. If if we have such a problem now, what to do with that? It's, yeah, it's behaving like a pulse rider. We will we will we will see how to. We are also having some thrombus formation in the superior division. Is no. no 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 thrombus. Marta says no thrombus. You can see that Manish is lower image. The round is no thrombus. Upper division is slightly fuzzy. So same as before. But this is P conus 2, right? Yes. Is it because this is P conus 2? No. No, we used many of those. To pull back the, the P conus entirely? Or? I wouldn't pull that out. So the question is in or out? In. In. 
Oh no, you mean the, the petal is out. What are you asking is, do you pull it out? What to do? To pull or to push? I can go to the… You will be able to push that. And In, ca uh, in case, in case you are closing the shaft, you, you don't think you can push it? <coughs> yeah. If I understand correctly, the P no. conus is open like that, like yeah. a yeah. leaf outside. If you push it, you're just going to get buckled up. You will see. Yeah, you you may be right. So no, um, I think there is no thrombus visible. But Mara is not trying. Yes, go ahead, say it. Yeah. So fir first of all, she will remove the coiling catheter in order to make sure that there is no interaction with the piconus. And now, as far as I understand, she will close the shaft of the piconus and try to advance it a little. Is re resheating, resheating it? it, okay. Yeah. How much is she going to resheat? She's now pushing. Isn't it already gone in? You can see those yeah, she pushed, she pushed it. Yeah. So it's gone in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't need to resheat the whole amount you're saying? No, you just it's, it's just... Okay. She's, she's saying um, resheating is not really necessary to move it because the shaft is so short and has so little material. It can, can go back and forth. So what are the ways you can push it in? So you can, you can go a little... Uh, now, now the picon is... She, she, she's, now, she's, she, she's now doing a uh, single image an unsubtracted single image to make sure that the uh, the pedal is out of the way. Still <coughs> Good, better, much better, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. got more flatter, though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So but it in this position, if, if it stays there, it shouldn't be an, an issue with the inferior trunk of the MCA. I think. Mm. I mean. That's how pulse rider looks. Hmm? That's how pulse rider looks. If you use a pulse rider, yeah, yeah. Is it so is there a risk of rupture of the aneurysm <coughs> neck while pushing these devices inside after coiling like this? Yes. Because we are yep. not seeing the rest of the petals. Yeah, but they are very, very atraumatic. They are rounded. Mm -hmm. They are smooth, rounded. They have this coverage from the the, the radiopaque markers. I, I think you you have to be really brutal to the rupture of the aneurysm. So, uh, th th yeah, it, it's certainly possible if you ask it this way, but the, I think the, the, the actual risk is low. So, in your experience, what has been the risk? Wait, wait, wait a moment, wait a moment hmm? Marta. You carry on? Go so, what, in your experience, what has been the regrowth or recurrence rate of these aneurysms? I will show you the, the true numbers later. So, go ahead, Marta. <laughs> Yes, yeah, the stent, the stent is, is reinserted into the aneurysm. It's at the neck, isn't it? But just, uh, yeah, just at the neck, but uh, s as far as I can tell, certainly out of the way of the uh, sure. inferior or superior trunk. I would, I would not expect any obstruction of either of the two trunks of the MCA. More coils? Yeah, I'm going to So if you have a problem like this, at the moment, what Martha did was she pulled a catheter out, a coiling catheter, then she pulled, resheated the P-conus, and then 
put a little bit of forward tension, pushed the device in, and then brought the system back, and now she's recatheterizing it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you use your technique that you showed? You know, push technique with the massage? I mean, uh, I mean this is something very different. Uh, over a stent, it wouldn't work. You need to get the wire in and then to slide the catheter in. Over the stent, the microcatheter tip will just get stuck in the struts. No. Only in the end, when it's pointing there, maybe one can, but still, it needs much more pressure to push it into the uh, over a stent device rather than a regular, rub and this is not a ruptured aneurysm, and there is all coils all around. So in this case, we will also wire it in that area and push it in. Can we, can we do one thing? Can we take, uh, take the microcatheter over the wire into the inferior division, just pull, out, pull back the wire a bit and then using that bend, you push that petal inside? Just you, you, you don't like the position of the pedal? You don't like the position of the pedal? You're, you're asking if... He means to say if it, it won't have gone back by pushing. Yeah. So what's that an al alternative to uh, reposition the pedal? I think the, 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 the impact, the, pos the possible impact of the, uh, the microcatheter in the inferior trunk is very difficult to, to steer and to anticipate. So if you go to the inferior trunk with this little 10-ish uh, catheter, uh, to, I mean, these are real German... 19 no <laughs> stands. They, they, they don't follow this flimsy catheter. It's, I think it's just not enough power uh, to, to push back the, the, the pedal. Are you saying the Germans don't change? Okay. You know, even if that position, Martha, would not have been able to move, would you have accepted that position? Did you hear the question? No, 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 the, no, the, no, the, quest, the question was, if, if your maneuver would not have been successful, would, ha would you have to done something else, or would you have just left it behind as it was? So the, 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 the spectrum of bailout uh, strategies includes just putting another stand like a, uh, it, sh it should be a strong stand. So for instance, a, uh, a solitaire would, would probably do the job or uh, as I mentioned, putting a floater burner, which is uh, probably also enough. It, yeah, at le yeah it, it, it would be enough to, um, to, to push uh, the uh, this, this single pedal out of the way. We have seen this with, with coils sometimes when, uh, in, in other circumstances, when the coil was out of the aneurysm, we just deployed a uh, floater word in, in order to bring the coil loops back. And but you know, even if you don't do, the metal in, this, in the petal is very less, right? Yeah, yeah. So yes. even if it hangs a little bit like that, you could potentially get away without putting a stand too, can't you? Yeah, um, yeah most, most likely, yes. I mean, the. The, the only reason is the uh, kind of a, f f f an, a sense of uncertainty or uncontrolled situation or something like that. From a rational standpoint, you're absolutely right. Yes, of course. I mean, the, the likelihood of, of creating any issue with this little petal in these, in these big arteries, I think it's close to zero. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you use a, uh, a pulse rider or an eclipse, you have probably the 50-fold amount of material in, in the same place. Yeah, I mean, pulse rider, we, we intentionally put the device in the artery. Yeah. And you got aspirin and everything on board. It's very unlikely that's going to cause a problem. Mm, no. 
Is Martha showing off? So now. Is she trying to show off? Show off? No, 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 no. no. She's. She, I think the key is to get a good packing in the end. She, she's, a, she's concentrating to, to finish yeah. the case now. And yeah, and actually our uh, transmission. Call it, she says coil insertion is a little more, more difficult and more, there, she feels more resistance. Pro most probably because the, the, the aneurysm is more or less full. All right, so. Yeah. I think I think uh, apart from the attachment, the the, the case is finished, right? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So, Mark. Okay. So contrast. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we we interrupted. You will, uh, as far as I understand, you will now detach the uh, piconus. Yeah. And we we s stop now the the transmission. Just thank her from our behalf. I mean, say everybody is clapping and. <laughs> do, do you hear this big noise? This big noise in the background. Butter. It, it was it was not a thunderstorm it was the audience any last questions from the audience yeah we have to well, just she's on the phone and tell her she's supposed to come for beers in Leeds because we are running very late in the and we have question we have another live transmit during that we can keep discussing right yeah. and yeah so we go to the next session